test doubles, like stubs, fakes, mocks, and spies, can make our unit tests much more powerful. I'm going to show you what each of those is and when they're useful. When we build tests, we'd like to make them have a single point of failure. When the test fails, we know which method is broken. When the method we're testing depends on other parts of the system, that isn't always true. So that makes us want a way to substitute a test implementation of the things the class we're testing uses. We call these test implementations doubles. Think theater, like a stunt double. Looks like the real thing, but does something differently. In our case, we don't need or want the correct implementation. We just want something that gives enough behavior to let our tests work. Remember, we aren't testing the class that we doubled. We're testing a class that uses that class. So we just need the behavior necessary for the way our tests are poking the class that we're testing. In order for us to be able to do this, we're going to need the real implementation and the double to implement the same interface so that the class that we're testing can hold either one. Then our test is going to give the double where the production code would give the real thing. For example, suppose I'm building a controller for a dog class. It needs to do the normal CRUD operations, and it needs to be able to tell us how many breeds are miniature breeds. In the production system, that would use a gateway to interact with a database. In the test system, we want to use a double. That gives us great benefits. First, we just need to agree with the gateway people on what the interface they will provide. Then, we can build our controller class without needing the implementation of the gateway, and that removes bottlenecks from our development process. Second, when our test fails, we'll know that it's our controller, not the gateway. And third, our tests will run much more quickly because they will not have to connect to or interact with a database. Depending on what kinds of methods we're testing, there are different kinds of doubles that we might need. The simplest double that we can make is a stub. This is an implementation that just contains some hard-coded responses. For example, the way our controller is getting the number of miniature breeds is to ask the gateway for the list of miniature breeds and then return its size. To test that, we want to make a double of the gateway that returns a known list. While we could build a full class for that, it's much cleaner to declare an anonymous class for our stub. This code declares a class that implements our gateway interface and includes a method that we need to override the method that we need for our stub. Sideline. I really made dog gateway an abstract class instead of an interface. That way there's a default implementation for every method instead of an interface. If I'd made it an interface, Every time I added a method to it, I'd have to build a default implementation in every place where I did this anonymous class trick. That'd be a mess. So my abstract class has the default implementations for everything, and I just override the methods I need to stub for each test. End of sideline. Having built our stub in the anonymous class, the test gives an instance of that class to the dog controller. Knowing what the gateway will give back means that we know what value to expect from the controller and our test is complete. So this is a stub because it returns hard-coded values. That works if we're just doubling methods to get that data. Suppose now that we need our controller to be able to add a new breed to the system. So our controller needs an add method and our gateway needs a create row method and a contains method so that the controller can make sure that we don't add duplicate breeds. We could build hard-coded stubs for specific cases, but that can get overwhelming. An alternative is to build a fake, which is a simpler Im implementation of the real thing. In this case, the real gateway would talk to some sort of database to manage the data, but that's more than our tests require. Instead, let's build a gateway that maintains the data in an array list. I've built all the gateways methods just storing the information in an array list. That's enough to make sure that the controller uses the gateways methods to get its jobs done. 
I don't have to code specific results. From my controller's perspective, my fake gateway functions exactly like the real thing. It just doesn't need the database to work. Once I've built the fake, the test needs to do two things. Give the controller an instance of the fake gateway and make sure each test gets its own instance of the fake gateway. This makes sure that our tests are independent and can run in any order. Each test starts with an empty gateway and loads the fake with whatever it needs. The nice thing about fakes is that our test setup is easy and the fake behaves just like the real thing. That makes our tests look like real code, which makes them really readable. However, building a valid fake for some situations is really complicated. For example, suppose you have two types of gateways that share some common data. We could have a dog breed gateway and a cat breed gateway, and they could share some common data like skin conditions that breeds tend to have. That would mean that changes to skin conditions would affect both gateways. That's hard to fake. For situations where the fakes are hard to build, we use our third technique, mocks. A mock is an object where we set up the behavior that we expect at the beginning of the test, and then we verify that the class we are testing uses the mock correctly. Clearly, we need an example. Let's recode the test for adding a dog breed using a mock instead of a fake. I'm going to use the package Makito to make that mock. With Makito, and other similar frame frameworks, our tests have three phases. We set up the mocks so that they know what they should return when they're called. We poke the class under test to invoke the behavior that we want to test. And then we verify that the proper methods in the mock were called. So when our controller's add dog breed method is called, we expect that it will ask the gateway if that breed has already been stored by calling the contains dog breed method. For the first test, we want the breed to not already be there so that the add has to happen. So I created a test and added the extend with Makito extension class annotation so that I could use Makito. Then I created a mock instance of the dog gateway and tell it, when someone calls contains with these parameters, you should return false. That's the end of setting up the mocks part of the test. Then I create the controller giving it that mock gateway and call the add dog breed method that we're testing. The final phase of the test is to make sure that the controller called the contains method and the create dog breed record in the mock gateway. The test would fail if it didn't make either of those calls. In addition, the last thing Makito does is make sure that nothing else got called in the mock. Let's run that with nothing in our controller method. This is what we see. It's showing us that it expected two calls and got none. To me, the cool thing about this is that I have to code the call on contains for this test to pass. If I was ver verifying the behavior by looking at the data that gets into the gateway, testing for adding would pass without code coding the call on contains and I'd have to build another test before I'd need to build that call. So tests like this are less about verifying the effect of the method. Notice that we never checked if Schnauzer really got added to the data set. It's really about making sure that our controller is using the gateway that it, the way it's supposed to. If it uses the gateway correctly, it works. The assumption is that the tests for the gateway will ensure they create dog breed record actually creates a record in the database. For good measure, let's look at the other add dog breed test, the one that's making sure we don't add duplicates. This time, I made the mocks contain method return true. After calling add dog breed in the controller, I verify that contains is the only thing that got called. Once I build the code to make the first test pass, this one would probably go green right away, but it never hurts to over test something. There's one more technique that we can use to test how one class uses another, spies. Sometimes you want the verification of calls being made like mocks give you, but you also want to make sure that those interactions have the effect you're hoping for. In other words, you want to use the real dependent class, but you want to track how it's being called by the class under test. 
We can do that with a spy. A spy is a class that wraps the dependent class and tracks all of the calls that are made to it and delegates those calls into it so that we can see their effect as well. For the example that we've been playing with, I don't have a real implementation of dog gateway. So let's put a spy on my fake dog gateway. I create the gateway and then I use Makito to put a spy around that gateway. When I create the controller, I give it the spy. Then I call the method that we want to test. Afterwards, I can verify that Schnauzer really got added to the gateway. And I can use the spy to make sure that my controller interacted with the gateway in the way that we expect. Good unit testing means that we design the tests so that they fail only if the class under test has a bug. That means we want our tests to not depend on specific implementations of the classes that our class under test depends on. We have four strategies for ways to substitute an alternative implementation for those dependencies. A stub is a class that returns hard-coded values that can usually be implemented as an anonymous class right in the test that we're building. A fake is an alternative and simpler implementation of the dependent classes. In general, they store the real, what the real class stores, but in simple ways and without complicated business logic. While they require some coding, our tests read like production code, which can be a nice way to document how the class under test should be used. A mock is an object that has been told how to behave and verifies that the class under te test interacts the way that it should. Frameworks like Makito and EasyMock help us create and use mocks. Finally, we can vary interactions with spies that wrap the real dependency and get the best of both worlds, verify the interactions, and verify their effects. All of this depends on our code using a pattern called dependency injection. And that's my next video.